if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I've lived in China for quite a while now, over a dozen years. So here's a topic that might be of interest to some of you. Should you move to China? I got the idea for this topic from some other channels, particularly Nobita from Japan, who often makes videos about reasons you might like to live in Japan and reasons you might not like to live in Japan. I may make videos like that at a future date also, but in this video I actually want to address an even more fundamental question, which is, can you move to China? Or consider from another angle, how can you move to China? Yeah, one does not simply move to China. Like almost any country in the world, China has visa requirements for foreigners who want to live there. And visas for long-term stays aren't given out just because you want one. You're going to need a reason why China should issue you one. The most common reasons are to stay with family, to attend school, or to work. If you've got close relatives who are Chinese nationals or permanent residents in China, you might be able to get a visa to come live with them. There's also a visa for living with a foreigner who's temporarily resident in China, but that one's not so useful because it's restricted to only parents, parents-in-law, spouses, and minor children of foreign residents. By contrast, the visa that lets you live with a Chinese citizen is available to grandparents, grandchildren, and siblings also. Your relative will need to invite you to China and prove kinship with you, and then you can come to China to live with them. But keep in mind that if you do that, your relative is basically responsible for you while you are in China and will have to support you, particularly because this visa does not permit you to work in China. So if you're wanting to do more than just live with your relatives, this probably isn't the right visa for you. Study visas are another way you could come to China for a while. If you're already a university student, there may be exchange programs that would allow you to spend a year or so in China. Some foreigners do also come to China to do entire degrees, though this tends to require learning a lot of Chinese first. Which brings up another reason you might study in China, to learn the language. Many universities offer intensive language programs that don't lead directly to a degree, but might prepare you for further study in Chinese. And these programs will also provide a student visa for however long you keep studying in them. Still, remember that your time on the student visa is limited to the length of time you keep studying. And that in turn is going to be limited by the length of your program and also by how long you can keep paying tuition. So studying isn't really a practical way to live in China for many years. But if you just want to spend maybe a year or a few years in China, it could work well for you. I've also heard of some people who gain the skills by studying in China that they ultimately use to remain in China for work. But that's not easy to count on. And that brings me to the main way people stay in China, working. A work visa is only good for a year at a time, but is renewable each year as long as you continue to be working, so it can allow you to remain in China a long time. I've been in China on a work visa for nearly 13 years now. But it's not as easy as just going out and applying for one. You'll need a job offer from an employer in China, and they in turn need a reason to employ you and not a local. Remember. China has 1.4 billion people, and a sizable share of those people need to be employed. Therefore, the government only wants foreigners working in China for good reasons. There are two major fields in which foreigners in China are employed, business and education. Education is especially popular among native English speakers because China has a great need for English teachers. 
You will need at least a bachelor's degree, though, and you usually need to hold a passport from one of the countries that China considers to be English-speaking countries, namely Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, the United Kingdom, or the United States. You may also need a certificate in teaching English to speakers of other languages, such as the CELTA offered by Cambridge ESOL. When I first came to China, teachers didn't really need this, but these days it's often necessary. Among the places that English teachers in China work are training centers, universities, and public schools. More lucrative jobs can be found in international schools, including the fast-growing international bilingual education sector. But there are also stricter qualifications here. Specifically, you're going to need whatever credentials you would normally need to be a school teacher in your home country. So Americans, for example, are expected to have a teaching certificate from a state. I believe that Brits are expected to have qualified teacher status in the UK. These jobs also hire quite early, so if you're thinking of getting one, get on it early. Business jobs are also many in China, since so many international companies have business dealings with China. Of course, we all know that many goods are made in China, so trade is big business here. The people I've known who worked in business here were often involved in things like finding factories that could supply the goods their companies needed, inspecting those factories to see if they were up to scratch, negotiating terms with Chinese companies, and even helping to oversee shipments. Some of them also attend trade fairs in order to find suppliers. This was particularly evident to me when I lived in Guangzhou, where there's a twice-yearly trade fair, commonly called the Canton Fair, which has been held since 1957. My friends who were doing business in Guangzhou would always be at this fair. If working with Chinese companies to get the products another company needs sounds interesting to you, this line of work could be right up your alley. And if you can find a job in the field that provides a visa, there's your opportunity to live in China. If you're watching this video soon after its release, you may be wondering, is it even possible to come to China now with the borders closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic? It's difficult at this point, but some people have managed it. Some people can still get a visa by first getting what's called a PU letter issued in China. I'll include a link in the description about these letters. If you're watching this in the after times when these aren't necessary anymore, congratulations on having made it into the post-pandemic world. I will likely continue to make further videos about this topic of moving to China. In this video, I just wanted to focus on the ways people can get visas to live in China. But in the future, I may make videos about whether you might like to live in China and also reasons you might not like to live in China. If that sounds interesting to you and you want to see videos like this, this would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching this video. See you next time. Bye!